네, 안녕하세요. 아, 저는 서강대학교에서 웹 3.0 기술 연구 센터장을 맡고 있는 박수영 교수입니다. 오늘 아, 특별히 그 코넬 대학의 아리 주열 교수님께서 한국에 방문하셔서 아, 저희 서강대학교 세미나 하시는데 세미나 하기 전에 교수님과 여러 가지 이야기를 좀 나눠 보려고 합니다. Okay, welcome to Korea. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, could you briefly introduce yourself and purpose of uh, visiting in Korea this time? I'd be happy to. Uh, uh, I'm Ari Jules. I'm a faculty member at Cornell Tech, mm -hmm. which is an applied sciences campus, um, a, essentially a joint campus uh, run by Cornell University mm -hmm. and the, the Technion. I'm also the co-director of the Initiative for Cryptocurrencies and Contracts, mm -hmm. which is a multi-campus, multi-faculty mm -hmm. initiative, research initiative mm -hmm. devoted to all things blockchain. And finally, I serve as chief scientist at Chainlink Labs. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm here for the launch of the Korean edition of mm -hmm. my novel, The Oracle. Okay. I see. Okay, so maybe we can talk about uh, the novel or uh, Oracle a little bit more. So maybe uh, Mr. Kim, uh, yeah. you have some questions yeah. about that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I actually, I'm the first person to read the yeah. novel Oracle yeah. as Korean. Okay. <laughs> and uh, this just sounded fascinating, mm -hmm. not only scientific perspective, but also mm -hmm. This novel itself explaining the details of smart contract blockchain. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to translate into Korean, but it's always a good thing to hear original story from the author. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ari, your novel did not start from the scratch. Uh, I heard it's based in 2015-16 research paper. So what's your motivation to write a novel based on research paper? Yeah, the novel actually had its genesis in two things. One key thing, as you said, was a research paper published in 2015 and 2016. This was the first research paper that I co-authored on a concept known as a smart contract. Okay. This is a program that runs on top of a blockchain. Mm -hmm. And because it runs on a blockchain, it has some very special properties. Okay. One of which is that in theory, it's unstoppable. And it occurred to me when I first heard about smart contracts that this particular property, the fact that it's unstoppable, yeah. might in fact mean that smart contracts could be used for malicious purposes, even wow. criminal purposes. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote about this in a paper. And the paper considered a number of criminal scenarios ranging from attacks on computer systems to wow. crimes in the real world. Okay. After writing that paper, I came to realize that smart contracts had many beneficial applications as well, sure. and both end up featuring in my book. But that paper led indirectly to my writing the novel. The second inspiration for the novel yeah. was a piece of architecture, mm -hmm. actually. A beautiful sky bridge. This is oh. a bridge that traverses two buildings. I have been there in New York. You've been yeah. to that bridge? Yeah. So as you know, it's an, it's an elegant bridge yeah. dating from the 1930s that spans two buildings across mm -hmm. the street. And I used to pass it every day on my walk to work. Okay. And I've always loved sky bridges. But this one in particular I found intriguing because it occurred to me that it would be the absolutely ideal spot for an mm -hmm. office. I wanted an office on that bridge. Okay. And it's right in the heart of New York City. It's beautiful, windows on both sides. And one day I was passing this bridge and the hero of my novel just appeared there in my imagination. Okay. So these two things together led to the creation of the novel. Very interesting, very interesting. So it sounds like your office is uh, beautifully located. So when you go up in the morning, you want to go to work earlier. <laughs> <laughs> that was my hope. The, that bridge is part of Google's offices now. I see. So uh, yes, and I, I got to visit the uh, offices there recently. And yeah. so I got up close to the bridge, but I wasn't quite able to enter the bridge. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, 
Yeah. Thank you. And my second question is, the oracle is really the central part of your novel. And we know the oracle from the Greek mythology. And also, we definitely know the oracle as decentralized network. So how can you think of this weird combination of Greek mythology with the current center part of blockchain technology? It's certainly not obvious what the connection between yeah. the two is other than the word. Okay. But in fact, there is a deep connection between oracles in the ancient world and oracles and blockchain networks today. Mm -hmm. Oracles in the ancient world served as sources of truth. Mm -hmm. In some cases, they delivered prophecies. In other cases, they delivered truths about the present time. Good. And oracles and blockchain networks actually have the same goal mm -hmm. to deliver truth. In this case, truth means accurate information relayed to smart contracts, mm -hmm. information about the price of digital assets, for instance, or about the I outcome see. of events, say sporting events, or about the weather. So in fact, the two, although obviously one is in principle powered by a Greek god, and the other is powered by computing devices, sure. the two have a very similar goal, at least in the abstract. Gotcha. Really reliable messenger. Um, I guess those kind of combination could be possible because you know both words. The Greek mythology, based on your literature study of Latin, uh, I have a chance to look at your resume. So you know both the Latin literature, Greek mythology, and also you know the technical part of blockchain smart country. So you are uniquely positioned to do that. <laughs> I have an unusually split personality, I suppose, I see. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in, in that sense, um, I'm wondering, I mean, these days uh, people are talking, a lot talking about uh, AI. So what is your vision for AI and blockchains, uh, their coordination? Or, I mean, the future of AI and blockchain? I think the combination of the two technologies holds tremendous promise. Mm -hmm. right. Now, the novel is about some of the risks that we incur in mm -hmm. combining these two technologies if we're not right. careful. But let me talk about some of the benefits to begin uh -huh. with. Uh, smart contracts are not really contracts and not really smart. Mm -hmm. right? As I said, they're just code that runs on a blockchain. Mm -hmm. But they can enforce legal agreements. Mm -hmm. The form of legal agreement they can enforce is very restricted. Mm -hmm. They can only enforce legal agreements that can naturally be expressed in the form of code. Mm -hmm. So they have this kind of rigidity. Mm -hmm. But if you combine smart contracts with machine learning, mm -hmm. for instance, with large language models mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. ChatGPT, mm -hmm. then you can relax some of the technical restrictions on mm -hmm. the capabilities of smart yeah. contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, smart contracts now can express not just the concepts that can be formulated naturally in code, but mm -hmm. concepts that can be formulated through human language, mm -hmm. through human expression. And they can do things like interpret legal codes and understand mm -hmm. social norms in principle. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the promise lies. Okay. But there's a risk mm -hmm. as well. And the risk is that by creating more powerful smart contracts, you enable their use for malicious purposes. This was the topic of the 2015-2016 paper we were discussing just a moment ago. I see. Yeah, I mean, there's a dark side and also a bright Absolutely. side. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. But further, kind of, as a, for me, as a university uh, professor, I mean, is there any kind of area of research for the future, like a combination of AI and blockchain? A Absolutely. Right. Can it's, you kind of uh, recommend? Yeah, I'm happy to talk about that. Some of the limitations of these machine learning models, uh -huh. uh, universal limitations, uh -huh. are particularly problematic in the blockchain arena. Uh, machine learning models are subject to hallucinations, mm -hmm. as you know. Yeah. Occasionally they will just make things up. Mm -hmm. And they're also vulnerable to what are known as adversarial examples or inputs. It's mm -hmm. possible for adversaries to craft inputs 
that fool these models, cause them to perform misclassifications or to output erroneous data. But those are, as I said, are universal problems. They're the problems are particularly acute when it comes to smart contracts because smart contracts are meant to be binding agreements, like legal agreements. The problem of hallucinations, because these are universal problems, they're problems that the machine learning community is trying to address. But I actually think that blockchain systems themselves can help at least to a certain extent in addressing some of these problems and the problems of uh, with the problem of adversarial examples in particular. Uh, the problem of adversarial examples arises because, or in situations in which it's possible for an adversary to provide arbitrary input, you know, input of the adversary's choice to a machine learning model. If you can restrict the set of inputs that an, a potential adversary provides the model, then at least heuristically, you know, at least uh, informally you can prevent some of these attacks and as we were discussing a moment ago oracle systems and blockchains are meant to deliver data that comes from authoritative sources authentic data in a sense so if you can fold that authenticated data this authoritative data into the queries that go into machine learning models then there's the possibility of limiting the scope for adversarial examples. Right? So that's an open topic of re research. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, thank you for food for further thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure. Yeah, my last question would be, uh, Ari, you are a very known person, a lot of credentials from security technology. Uh, in Korea, many banks of Korea, when you open new bank account, they give us five the security, the code. Yes. And you were chief scientist at RSA. You contributed a lot. And then you naturally evolved into smart contract blockchain technology. So did you enjoy uh, your travel up to now? <laughs> <laughs> well, in a way, I came home to blockchain technology or cryptocurrency okay. in the sense that I first started doing research on cryptography mm. because of an interest in what was then called eCash back in the 1990s. Okay. Was before the advent of cryptocurrency, people were thinking about ways that cryptographic algorithms, mm. the tools used to protect information, oh, for yeah. instance, to encrypt information, way those tools could be used to create an electronic version of the physical cash okay. that we use in day-to-day -day life. And that was the inspiration for my study in cryptography to begin with. Ah, I see. Uh, later, I started exploring other applications of cryptography, mm -hmm. but then rediscovered the important role that cryptography can play in finance when Bitcoin and technologies that came in its wake gotcha. um, arose. Okay. Great. If I play the uh, devil's advocate role, uh, there are some pros and cons of cryptocurrency, blockchain. What's the uh, somewhat misconceptions about cryptocurrency or Bitcoin? There are quite, quite a number <laughs> of misconceptions. <laughs> uh, many of them caused by scammers, con artists, right, who are inevitably attracted to new technologies. Okay. But I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that the scams that we have seen somehow are intimately bound up with the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, an example would be the relatively recent collapse of FTX. FTX right? Well, what Sam Bankman free did didn't rely at all on blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. right? He was essentially committing accounting fraud yeah. of the type <laughs> that has existed and been committed yeah. for decades, centuries, you know, yeah. since time immemorial. So the technology was really an excuse for perpetrating a crime that could have been perpetrated without the use of blockchain technology. Right. And so that's, that, that is a major misconception. Another major misconception 
is that blockchain technology equals Bitcoin. Okay. And <laughs> Bitcoin was the inspiration mm -hmm. for blockchain technology, but blockchain technology has much broader scope Definitely. than Bitcoin, yeah. than cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And smart contracts, these programs that can be run mm -hmm. on blockchains, yeah. that provide a lot of flexibility when it comes to crafting new applications, I see. are an example of a, f or a facet of the technology mm -hmm. that is essentially independent of Bitcoin. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, Ari, in essence, your knowledge, philosophy, and your unique view are all covered by this book, right? I, I would say so. I put a lot of myself <laughs> into that book. Yeah, yeah. the Oracle. <laughs> And this is not just storytelling book. This is really science fiction, crypto thriller novel in its own kind. Breaking, groundbreaking novel. So please read this book with Ari's strong recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, thanks for visiting Korea. Thanks for visiting Sagan University. Pleasure. Thank okay. you for having me here. Yeah.